Well, the, uh, the, the topic of this uh, panel is how, how do we come together uh, as a health system? Uh, I started out this morning by talking about the things that we do uh, as a health system. And I think it's fair to say that we have made a lot of progress, but it's taken a lot of time. Uh, the things that uh, I presented to you this morning have taken uh, around eight years uh, to develop. Uh, and while uh, at the surface of it, it looks like we are uh, functioning as a system, in fact, when you get more granular, uh, you find that it uh, really, we're not functioning smoothly as a system, not as smoothly as we should be. Uh, the context for this discussion is in, is in the quality uh, area. Uh, and we've had, when we started CHQI, we wanted to tap into the, extra, uh, the intellectual capacity that existed among UC Health as a system uh, to identify best practices and then spread those ac across the system, implement them system-wide. I think it's fair to say that we have been eminently successful in the first part, identifying uh, the intellectual capacity, developing the, the, the projects, we have been only fair in the second part, implementing them system-wide. And you heard from Greg Maynard this morning, even when it's clear that there is interventions or an intervention uh, that improves outcomes, cost, et cetera, it's, we can't always implement it. And the, the issue seems to be not so much system-wide, but at the local campus. So the question I have in three of you is how can we overcome that so that we can take advantage of what we decide as a system uh, is beneficial for the patients we care for uh, and not have the thousand points of veto uh, that uh, we, we come up against every once in a while. No. You've been here the longest. They're, they're it to me. <laughs> well, first thing I want to say is E11.9 that's diabetes mellitus without complication, just so we, so we leave with something productive today. Thank you. Could have fooled me. Um, you know, Jack, I think uh, Julie made a comment earlier. Uh, we are, we've grown up historically as independent organizations with very little linkage. We competed, we still compete, compete for talent, compete for patients. Uh, and only in the last few years, and really the credit is due to you personally, that we have come together to really start to share what we collaboratively can do. And I think, you know, we're meeting in the room where the regents meet, and the regents would be pleased to know that we're meeting here, but I think if they saw some of the data that we saw today with the huge variation in practice, they would not be happy. Right. And frankly, we've got variation within our or own organizations, much less across them. So I, I, I think uh, it's uh, where does the accountability lie? And if it's just left to individual campuses, we'll do our thing, we'll collaborate as much as we want. But I, I kind of feel like we're at a moment with the, the regents, uh, the system, the pressures from the market, that we've got to come together in a much more aggressive way than we ever have in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I couldn't agree more. I think that um, there is a real need for us to have at a leadership level that alignment and accountability. And I know that we each, I certainly feel like I have, a, we have a lot of work to do at our own local campuses, but then as a system and, you know, as someone new coming in, all I saw was what a tremendous opportunity it was to work across the larger UC system with the collective power and knowledge and innovation that's going on at every site. That's really exciting. But I don't think we've you know, leveraged it as much as we can. And if there is any time to really have that burning platform, it's now. When you look at our, our five-year financial projections, when you look at what's happening in healthcare, there's no better time for us to really align organizationally so that we can have continued success and economic viability, particularly in this market. Yeah, so also being relatively new um, and uh, just observing what happens at the local level and at the system level, uh, two observations. Um, one is there's um, a degree of skepticism about why that value proposition makes sense for the faculty and others. 
Um, and then the second um, uh, has to do with um, is, is there um, a intention to subordinate our interests to the larger system that would compromise the level of autonomy that had existed heretofore? I think they're related. I think they're part of the culture, uh, Jack, just to get back to your question. Um, I think you solved the first one um, uh, really by um, revealing data that makes clear that there are, to Mark's point, uh, marked variances that uh, would lead, if standardized and optimized and brought across um, all of the five, that it would produce benefit for those providing care and those receiving care. I think that's one way to start. In our, uh, at the local level, I think data is, winds up being the best place, particularly those who remain skeptical, perhaps uh, even um, those who have historically uh, decided not to uh, uh, want to be in the tent. I think the data brings them into the tent. Uh, with regard to the second issue, I, I think the, the maintenance of the integrity uh, and the identity of each of the local entities is important because although we have such a shared common mission, we also have discrete features that are unique to the markets that we operate in. And preserving those and then leveraging to the extent, I hope, that brings us optimally together to benefit across while still being able to sustain the identity that is necessary for our own patient population, I think is the challenge that uh, is the one that might respond to the second concern. Uh, Peter, in his presentation this morning, talked about the importance of structures-less governance uh, and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something that we should be considering at the structures-less governance level to uh, help move, move the agenda forward? So um, I think it, it all kind of starts and has to map back to the overall strategic plan of UC Health. And I think you've done a great job, Jack, laying that out this past year. And it's an opportunity for us then at each of our local campuses, because I agree with Howard, there are a lot of uniquenesses, there's a lot of uniquenesses in each market, of how we leverage that campus strategic plan to deliver the objectives of the overall UC plan. The one thing I will notice, um, and I think it's a little bit of a culture change, um, I think sometimes when we say we want to align our governing principles, um, people think that we're, we're talking about layering in bureaucracy and making it harder to get things done. And I actually feel that when you have a good strategic plan and you have good alignment, you can actually execute much faster in a market and in a much more coordinated way. But I think people confuse those terms. And, um, and you know, just speaking for UCLA, I think over the years there have been so many great things done. But I would say that in many times we've been opportunistic rather than strategic. So something came up and we just did it. And then when you look and say, how does this map back to overall strategy, it raises a lot of questions. And going forward, when we're not, no longer making $100 million a year or more than that, we can't afford to have take that many chances. Jack, I, I, I don't know about the structure, but I, I, I'm really resonating to Howard's point. But I think we, we hide behind the local market uniqueness, and we hide behind the specialness of our individual circumstances. Those, there are differences that exist, but what's common among us vastly swamps what's different. And I, I think, uh, you know, as I, I think ahead to where you see health should be in 10 years or 15 years, uh, it's hard for me to envision that the current model is going to be the, the appropriate model for us. I, it's hard to imagine that operating five, maybe six clinical enterprises uh, is, is, is uh, unconnected but except for common group purchasing. I don't see that as being leveraging really what we have here. So I'm just guessing that someplace over time, whether one of us gets into such deep financial trouble or or you are ordered by the regents and the president to fix X, Y, and Z problem, this thing is going to come together uh, as, a, as an enterprise. And, and I think at that point, then we'll have to start to say, okay, how does this clinical enterprise interface with five, six 
medical schools? Do we keep those separate? How do we optimize their performance? It's going to raise a lot of questions. How does it relate to six different campuses? But it just feels to me like we're moving in the direction of much more centralization for the purposes of efficiency, uh, covering the market, et cetera. Yeah, I'd just add a couple of additional points. Um, you know, just in the abstract, if you think about the future, um, the, the economic pressures and the need to continue to address what I think uh, we all share is our uh, tripartite mission, particularly with the social justice component now probably being more challenged than perhaps I can remember historically. It raises the thought that um, the way in which each of these campuses have ar arisen with the exception, as I understand it, of UCSF, where there is a campus which is focused more on the academic activities unrelated to health, and then there are the health sciences and the clinical enterprises itself. That dynamic, I think, Jack, is likely to need to evolve. Um, there is downward pressure in higher education that we're all feeling, um, even though I sit across the, uh, you know, the other side of the campus. And the, the rate of, uh, of that pressure on us is probably unprecedented. And so if there was to be uh, an, a reorganization, if you think about it, in some period of time, one, I'd like it not to be driven by an urgent need to make a decision, but to carefully plan it out. Um, and if we were able to do that, it would make sense for the clinical pieces of this uh, to be brought uh, in some type of uh, harmonization uh, that would allow for them to function more fully like a system. Um, it has all of the attendant issues that will be uh, raised by any chancellor. I don't know if any are in the room, but uh, I understand all of those. But I think that healthcare demands that we take a, lot, a little bit different look about that future, because I don't think the trajectory that we're on currently is one that can be described as familiar. It's, it's remarkably unpredictable. And if we had to make a decision, we'd like to do it with all forethought and really plan together. Yep. I agree. Mark, you talked about accountability. Uh, uh, do you think we could use the reconfigured health services committee uh, to uh, to instill that the the urgency for accountability, particularly in the quality area? Well, I I think first again again Jack, credit to you. That committee is a huge step forward for improving the quality of the governance of the of this enterprise that constitutes a third or more of the whole University of California. But having said that, and knowing that the TV cameras are off, you know, I, I think if you were to say, what would a board look like that would be ideal for this, you might start with individuals there, but you would add to it. And I think what we suffer from a bit is that our, our board of regents who are very supportive, engaged, and interested, and so forth, are not very knowledgeable about this space. They've got a big learning curve to go through, and I think that's going to be our challenge to, to deal with. But it's a good place to start. Other comments? Yeah, I, I would just say the, uh, the step forward, Jack, again, kudos to you in helping to get the uh, HSC reorganized. It's a, it's a more responsive and knowledgeable body, but I think the other thing that has come up repeatedly, uh, and I understand historically as well to the present, um, in the current environment, we'd like to be able to go from strategy to execution more crisply. Uh, and that's challenging to do in the current uh, configuration. So if there was to be a change, that would be one that I would commend consideration of. Yeah, and I think the committee, you know, in its first year is doing a really good job understanding our system. But again, I think um, the more that they're connected to where we are in the market in the state of California and then also nationally, and then where some of our competitors are, I think they'll be able to really um, help weigh in a little more critically on some of our strategies and really force us to look more critically at some of the things that we're doing or not doing. Um, I think um, once you get regents to that level of understanding, they end up being a very good barometer in order to help us guide change. Uh, let me just say that uh, Mark mentioned centralization. Uh, I often get 
maybe accused isn't the right word, but when I present the strategic plan, which has a heavy emphasis on this coordination and integration, that I'm talking about centralization. I think we've demonstrated that we can have coordination and integration without centralizing yes. it in a, in a specific yes. geographic area. So, sure. The idea is how do we coordinate and integrate uh, uh, more. Okay, well, thank, I want to thank the panel very much. Good discussion. Thank, you. thank, the, thank the audience. <laughs>